welcome to the Careers by Jen podcast, episode 218. On this episode of the podcast, Jen discusses getting unstuck, how to awaken your creativity. Yeah, I don't know. I can't think of anything for this one. You're listening to the Careers by Jen podcast with me, Jen Swanson, the podcast that helps you to get the job, love your work, and advance your career. Do you ever feel like every single drop of creative juice has been wrung from your body? Are you flat out of ideas? Has it been a while? since you had to think with that side of your brain and you kind of forget how. If any of this is you, keep listening, because today I'll be sharing some ways to get yourself unstuck creatively and to awaken that part of yourself so that you can create, imagine, and produce what you need to at work and and, and in every part of your life. We'll jump in right after this. Are you procrastinating? Do you want to start a job search but aren't quite sure where to begin? Is it all just a little overwhelming? At Careers by Jen, we have a five-day jumpstart your job search challenge to help you get unstuck and move toward finding your dream job. Every day for five days, you'll receive an email to your inbox that asks you to complete one task. Every task you complete moves you closer toward your goal. The best part about this challenge is that it's absolutely free. Come over to careersbygen.com and you'll see the five-day jumpstart Start your job search challenge on the right hand side of the screen. Click on the image of Jen, sign up with your email address, and you'll be five friends, days closer to reaching your goal. And Why as wait I when you can get this busy, episode, visit careersbygen.com after this podcast. The hours of my ministry job in my new amalgamation, and I'm working madly on getting four services done this week. And so the creative juices are flowing, but it's not always easy. There are weeks when I have absolutely no idea what to offer you for the podcast or what to offer as far as Sunday morning goes or even what to say when I'm writing an email to someone. Sometimes it feels as if my creative juices have evaporated completely and there's nothing left. I'm bone dry. And that's when it gets to be hard slogging. So today I have 11 ways that you can get yourself unstuck if you find yourself in one of these dry spells, ways to awaken the flow again so that you can get back to doing the work that you need to do with energy and with enthusiasm because no one wants to be stuck. It's too hard (laughs) and life is hard enough as it is. All right, so let's let's jump into these 11 ways that you can use to get get back to being your creative self. The first one is to know that you are already creative. You are. There is some creativity inside you whether you acknowledge it or not. Now, I know some people say, "I don't have a creative bone in my body." And I say, That is absolutely not true. Every single one of us is a creator. We create all the time. Did you make yourself breakfast? Well, you're a creator. Did you compose an email today? You're a creator. Did you put together a PowerPoint or bake a cake or organize an event? You are a creator. If you are a parent, you have created tiny humans and you are raising them to be full-grown humans. You are creating something. You have created a family. Some of you know you are creative and you've done very obvious kinds of creation, like writing songs or writing books or painting pictures or playing an instrument. Maybe you sew or you knit or you build things or you you work in the garden. We humans create in innumerable ways all the time, but sometimes we don't realize that that's what we do. Sometimes we forget how to do that. Or maybe someone once upon a time has told us that we're not very creative and we believed them. Or we've told ourselves over and over again and then we believe our own words and we've said, I'm just not creative. 
we tell ourselves these things sometimes and we shouldn't believe everything we we think and everything we tell ourselves but you were born a creature able to create so it might just be the case of believing it and changing that inner dialogue and allowing yourself to believe that yes indeed you can create because you can trust me it's in you so that's the first one believe that you can do it The second one is to change locations or environments. Sometimes the location or the environment you are in can affect your creativity. Maybe you're just tired of looking at the same walls. Maybe you're bored. Maybe you're stuck in a routine or a habit. And changing that can spark some creativity inside. Try working in a different room. Try working in a completely different space if you can. Or try standing up instead of sitting. Or try sitting instead of standing if you can't go very far away from your desk. I've said before that I always work very well in a busy coffee shop. And sometimes being in a noisy environment, I don't know why, I don't understand it, but sometimes it just does something energy-wise for me and my writing tends to flow. But maybe you're in a place that's too noisy already and you need to be somewhere absolutely quiet. Maybe go to the library. Maybe try removing background noise if you can. Put some earplugs in or headphones. Or maybe maybe you want some music. Maybe you need some music as your background score. Change your environment because sometimes just doing that can bring about creativity. The third thing is to get curious. This is my absolutely most favorite tool in the toolkit, curiosity. Start asking why or start asking what if. Questions. Get curious about why you feel stuck and unable to do what you need to do. What's standing in your way? What's blocking you? Have a conversation with yourself and about it or use curiosity to explore questions that you might have around what it is that you need to create. Who is the the project for? Who will read this report that I have to write? And why? Do, what do they want to know? And why do they want to know it? What would make the event that you have to plan the absolute best event ever? So instead of focusing on answers to start with, try leaning on some questions and see where they take you. Try to answer some questions about the creative thing you're supposed to be producing and see if you can uh, spark some creativity by asking good questions. It's a little bit of an exercise, but it really works. So get curious. That's number three. Number four, go for a walk. Get outside into nature. Walking is known for its ability to open up your thinking. Fresh air, movement, scenery, it all helps the blood and oxygen to circulate and it can calm you down if you are getting freaked out because you're not able to think creatively in the moment. So just getting up and moving and breathing in the the fresh air, this can help calm you down and focus you, especially if you're if you're fretting. So take a breather, actually breathe as you move. Chances are when you come back, you'll have some fresh ideas. Number five, collaborate. The two, um, the two heads are better than one. That old adage is true. Try joining your mind with someone else's and see what comes of it or get a group of people together to help you brainstorm and figure, figure out some ideas. I know that when I'm depleted, I will either call or meet with someone who has some inspiring ideas or I listen to podcasts or I watch YouTube videos or somehow find ways to bounce ideas around with someone live or learn from someone who has recorded their learnings for others to benefit from. So so try and find somebody who's doing what it is that you need to be doing and learn something from them. And uh, I had a meeting last week with a colleague who just was out of ideas for the next uh, 
church season coming up after after uh, Easter Sunday, and she just wanted to get together with a couple of us to bounce some ideas around and to share some resources, and that's all it took. We didn't actually do a lot. We just got together and talked about it, and some ideas started to flow. So sometimes just being with other people physically, because we don't do that a lot, right? We do a lot of stuff online, a lot of stuff virtually. If you can get together with people face-to-face, you might uh, find that things move. Number six is to use metaphors. Metaphors are brilliant, and sometimes thinking in metaphors can spark creativity. For example, if you're trying to create a project or a report or an event, find a way to describe it using a metaphor and then see what happens. It sounds weird, but it actually works. Name it. Give it a metaphor. You know, this this project is, is like a tree. And we, we begin with good solid roots and then we have to build up the trunk. And then once we've got the trunk, we can start branching off into these different areas. And then each of these different areas will hopefully flower and bear fruit, right? You can see how you can, you can start moving with a metaphor. It can actually give you a place to focus if you can, uh, if you can think of one. So use metaphors. Number seven is one of the ways that I really, really find helpful. And this is using a mind map. Mind maps are, uh, it's a way of brainstorming that can be excellent at opening up ideas. There are lots and lots of examples of mind maps online. You can even get apps for mind mapping. But basically, you begin with an idea. You draw a little bubble or a circle on a page, write in your idea, and then draw a stick outward from the bubble and and write another word down and draw a circle around it, another bubble, and, and put keep doing that until you have lots of ideas on a page. I did this when I, I was planning the writing of my book, What They See, How to Stand Out and Shine in Your New Job. Um, I took a great big piece of white paper, big, big sheet of white paper, one of those rolls of paper, actually. I found this the other day. I found it. Um, it was uh, it was in a, a book with all of my notes about the book. <laughs> and uh, I had um, written down bubbles for each of the chapters that I wanted to address in the book. And then around each bubble, I drew smaller ones with the topics that I wanted to include. So communication was one. And then all of the things that I wanted to talk about around communication, professionalism was another one. And all of the things I wanted to talk about around workplace professionalism. So, um, so in the end, I had my entire book with all the chapters and all the things I wanted to say in those chapters on one big sheet. So it's a great way to get a whole project onto one large sheet of paper in an in an outlined fashion. And so I'm a big fan of this. I think there are, uh, I th- as I said before, there are apps that can help you do this if that's more preferable to you. Uh, but I just used markers and a great big piece of white paper uh, different colored markers and uh, and sat down probably for an hour and a half and um, and then I had the, the somewhere to begin right so you could do that with any kind of a project that you have to work on is uh, create a mind map that's number seven number eight is engage your imagination and by this I mean don't be afraid to dream a little engage your imagination and suspend judging your ideas right off the bat. Just let your ideas flow without judging them. An idea might seem too big. It might seem too challenging. It might seem impossible. And that might be true in the end. But let it be for a bit and just see what happens and what begins to flow when you stop with that negative inner voice that criticizes every thought and just dream. We've We've lost that, that skill or that option, it seems, because there's no time. There's, it's not efficient to just sit there and use your imagination. Uh, there's too much to do. It's really sad, don't you think, that we have lost the value. We don't seem to value just sitting there and using our imagination um, 
to to plan and to dream and to think things up but it's it's important it's we encourage kids to use their imagination but do we do that with adults i don't think so very often so uh engage your imagination and and set aside some time sit there with your cup of tea or a cup of coffee or whatever you drink in the morning and uh and just think for a bit the ninth thing is to take a risk do something that you don't ever do the last part of my book that i mentioned includes a 30-day risk challenge inviting the reader to do something new that they've never done before every day for 30 days now by risk i don't mean a risk to your life or your safety or your well-being i mean do do something that stretches you something that's a little bit maybe uncomfortable that you don't normally do, you don't tend to gravitate toward. If you go to work the same way every day, try going a different way. Go a different route. Um, If you normally drive, try taking transit. If you eat the same thing for lunch every day, try something new. If you go to the same restaurant and order the same food, try shaking that up a bit. Try food that you've never eaten before. Read a book that you would not normally read. Go into a store that you normally wouldn't bother with. Take a class or see a show or do something that puts you in into a new environment. Travel is very, very good for that. Testing out a new sport or a hobby is good for that. Our eldest daughter and her fiancé and uh, Scott and I tried indoor rock climbing last year for the very first time. It was really hard but it was also really fun. It was not fun if you don't do heights very well. So Scott wasn't all that thrilled with it, but we, we had a good time and we were, he and I were definitely the oldest people in the place. It seemed to be a sport for the 30 and under crowd, but wow, does it take concentration and uh, mental agility, never mind physical strength, um, to, to take the risks of where to put your hands next and where to put your feet next uh, so that you don't fall. And, uh, and wow, it was, it was hard work, but it was great. It was fun and uh, I enjoyed it. So take a risk, start small, feel those creative juices begin to move. Do something new every day for 30 days. It's the 30 day risk challenge. Number 10 is to keep an idea book. Ideas might arise in the middle of the night when you wake up or when you're waiting for the bus or no matter where you are. And I don't, I I know that if I don't write down the ideas when they pop into my head, then often they just disappear. So keep an idea book wherever you go and something to write with and record your ideas down so that you can keep them all in one place. And then when you go to create your thing that you have to create, you will have your ideas in one place and you'll remember them. And number 11 is read more. This one really helps me. I use the library. Um, I have a Kindle, which is dangerous because it's really, really easy to order books. Um, I find articles online, read something that inspires, read something that provokes you, that gets you thinking and learning. Uh, poetry is good for that. Learning can really get the mind moving. I'm a lifelong learner and I'm always reading or taking classes or attending conferences or or watching TED Talks or um, looking for articles on subjects that I'm interested in. There's so much available at our fingertips uh, to get us going. And so take advantage. Read the newspaper even. Does anybody do that anymore? (laughs) Uh, Get a newspaper, a real old-fashioned newspaper, paper one, and sit there and read it in a coffee shop. Uh, Grow your neural connections, and you might be surprised at what bubbles up. You are a creative creature, so please don't believe that you are not. Sometimes these things get stuck, and I get it. I've been there many, many times. So my invitation to you is that you try two or three of these 11 ideas even and allow yourself the time it takes to get unstuck and to step into your creative self so that you can succeed. Until next time, this is Jen Swanson. Thanks for listening.
You've been listening to Careers by Jen with Jen Swanson. If you like what you heard, please share this. You know, if every single person listening today shared this episode with just one friend, our audience would be twice as big just like that. And the more people we can help with our content, the better. So help out a friend and help grow our audience by sharing this show with someone you know who would benefit from the content. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do that and together we can make a difference. Until next time, take good care.